But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today we are going to speak a little bit about Christmas. And if you are a person who don't like Christmas, please just leave because this is not a place for you. I know you are sad. You don't like Christmas. I know you like depression. I know you have mental issues. I know. I know what you don't know. Allah said. <laughs> You know, it was a very interesting week, you know, speaking of the Christmas, and you will see all kind of dummies making some comment. I will show you the last comment I received, and then we go to the Abdul. So this video will became two part. So the one who download it later, please cut it off, make it two pieces, all right? One piece for you and one piece for me. All right. So first of all, Merry Christmas to everybody. I hope you enjoy your time and your great joy with Christ. Uh, let us go to some silly comment from those who claim to be Christians. Maria Hozar, Hozar, Hosazar, saying, Nowhere a command to celebrate birthday of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The celebration, it is a tradition of a man. It is in the scriptures. And then she quote for us some verses. Here you see the stupidity. All the verses you quote for us is about following the tradition of worshipping false gods. About for worshipping false gods. I mean, do even those people know how to read? Do they have a brain? And you know, I don't want to be rude. You know, I mean, when, when they speak about not to follow tradition, I bet you that those who speak against the Christian, they wear bikini when they go to swim, they put 10 kilograms of makeup in their face, and uh, they claim to be Christians. But this is the tradition of the man you are talking about, this tradition of pagan nations. So hypocrisy is the superseding everything. First of all, to say this is we are following tradition of the man, to show you how stupid you are, sorry, I have to say that word, that is going to be tradition of the man. If this is a man who was before us worshiping different God who was practicing Christmas. It's called the Christmas, you idiot. Stupidity of, of those people is amazing. Matthew 15, 3. But he answered and said to them, why do all you also transgress the commands of God by your tradition? You see the stupidity here? By your tradition, and those are Jews. Right? Those are Jews. But they are mixed in tradition, have nothing to do with them. So when the Christians, they celebrate the Christmas, how that is, a tradition of anyone when this is about Christmas it's about simply Christmas is a Christ 
prayer, mass. It's not Santa Claus. It's not a tree. It's not a gift. That is the Christmas. The stupid you says nowhere it says that in the Bible. When all the Bible is about two things, the coming of Jesus first time and the coming of Jesus second time. If you ask a Christian, what is the proof that Jesus, he came, the Messiah? They will say, oh, let us go to Isaiah. Is that what you do? Let us go to Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah, where, where, where? Isaiah, Isaiah number seven. Oh, okay, uh, Isaiah, what, what happened in Isaiah number seven? Oh, the virgin, she will give birth. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, so this is, this is a tradition, huh? 700 years before Jesus, hundreds of years before Jesus, the Old Testament speaking about the Christmas. And to show that how great this day is, because the whole world is waiting for it, just to let you know, idiots, those idiots who they say there's no Christmas. The Jews until now, they are waiting for their Christmas. Do you know that? Because they are waiting for the birth of Christ. And those potatoes who claim to be Christians, they just say, where well, in the Bible it says celebrate Christmas? God himself celebrated Christmas. Isn't it God he sent his angels? Isn't it God here is telling the prophet a great sign, a miracle? Do you think the miracle happened for nothing? Do you think God is making a circus? He's making a show? Let me show you my skills. I will make a virgin give birth. Is that something happening every day? So those dummies, they celebrate the birthday of their child, and they say we should not celebrate birthday. The Bible never order us, but they celebrate their birthday. She celebrates her birthday, the birthday of her sister, the birthday of her children, and by gifts and by cake, but celebrating the birth of Christ, which they will save the whole world, is a tradition. Do you see how silly they are? Isn't it, this is the verse you keep quoting for everybody to say this is a Christ? It's about his birth. It's about Christmas. And saying celebrating, just to show you how idiot you are, isn't it the Bible says every day is the day of the Lord? <laughs> just designate a day. That will not make it a tradition of pagan. If you designate a day right now, if I say I will make this day the day of fasting for the Lord, that is not a tradition. Stupid, for every day is the day of the Lord. If I say, from now on, we are going to make us a, a prayer, gathering prayer every Tuesday, but we pray at uh, Sunday or Saturday, so why Tuesday? Doesn't matter. Every day is a prayer day. And then you will say to me, this is tradition of the man. That's because you are silly and you don't understand. You don't understand that God, he said, that he made Sabbath for the man, not the man for Sabbath. So Christmas happened for the man, not for Jesus. Jesus did not need a Christmas. Yesterday, somebody sent me a link about a video saying why Jesus needed to come through a virgin. And I laugh at the title. I mean, needed? Jesus don't need. God don't need it. What God is God. What needed? <laughs> that is really not even a good uh, uh, title. So God do not need us. God do not need our Christmas. God do not need our celebration. But because we are happy and we love him. Always celebration is about you celebrate who? So if you are celebrating a pagan God, that will make it pagan. If you are celebrating the sun as they claim, like 25th of December, they used to. So what? Let us say for the sake of argument, your son was born in 25th of December. Are you going to make a birthday of 25th of December? For sure you would do. Secondly, we don't care about the date. We don't care. As an example, the Orthodox, they celebrate in January 6th. So, January 6th. Are you happy now? And actually they say this is according to their calendar accurate. Some they say to you, like, oh, how Jesus, when he was born, the shepherd was in the field. It's winter, isn't it? <laughs> the idiot do not know that this is the Middle East. In the Middle East, shepherd they take their their animals every day out to the to the to the to the field every day.
What's wrong with people? <laughs> How they will feed them then? Do you think they have big storage houses? They cut the grass. Do you think they are like a companies owned by Walmart or Costco or, you know, those are huge monsters? Farmers, you know, villagers, you know, they do take their, their sheep out. Well, what they would do? And this is the Middle East. We are not living in Eskimo. And I saw some videos of some people suffering from depression. I hate Christmas. And then the guy, he showed you a bunch of people fighting from a video of a Black Friday. So I left a comment for him. I said, Abdul, potato. So you are upset from a Christmas because people beat each other for shopping in Christmas. But this is from Black Friday. I never heard of people beating each other in the Christmas. I mean, what we are buying exactly. In Black Friday, people go crazy, lose their mind because they want to get a cheaper, cheaper product. In Christmas, it's not cheap. Here we notice that people, how they are shallow, and they don't understand that Christmas is not about a day. Christmas is about Christ. This is the day of Christ. Any day you designate for the Lord, it is His day. And as you see, from the old time, from the Old Testament, Christmas is celebrated, God Himself. And then we go to Luke. Or we go to other verses. You see, if you go right now to John, John chapter 1, because it's in every, 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 every Bible celebrating Christmas. If we go to John chapter number 1, right away it says that the Word was God, right? In the beginning it was the Word, and the Word was God. And then right away, the great news for us as a Christians, and for the world, actually not only for us, that the world became a flesh. That is the birth of Jesus. They say to you, well, it says Christmas. If there is no Christmas, there is no Easter. If there is no Christmas and no Easter, there is no Christianity and there is no Savior. If you go to Luke 2, I'm just giving you examples, you know, there's many chapters in the, in the Quran, the, I'm sorry, in the Bible. There's no need to mix for the stupid Quran right now. Actually, even the stupid Quran, Christmas is celebrated. The angels came to Mary to tell her the great news. <laughs> and this is a story stolen from the Bible. Angels of God came to Mary to tell her the great news that she will have a child. Imagine if this has happened to you. Are you going to celebrate that day when angels come to your house saying, Hey, your son is going to be the most important person. Properly, your son right now is a drug dealer. Still, you are celebrating his birthday. Isn't it amazing? Properly, your son is a couch potato. He don't even go to clean his, his nose. And still you celebrate his birthday. But celebrating the birth of Jesus is making them angry. For into you is born in this day, in the city of David, a Savior, which is a Christ the Lord. And they say to you, there's nowhere in the Bible speak of Christmas in this day now the date is not important the day happened and this is, shall be a sign it's a miracle the angel is going around to spread the news of a Christmas and those dummies they say where how when this is not an occasion is exist Look like God, he was wasting his time. Hey, angels, go and tell everybody, okay? Oh, God, this is not important. What is the big deal? I mean, we should not, this is a tradition. So look like it's a tradition for God himself 
to send people to invite them to come to Jesus. Hey, we have a party in the house of Jesus, which is a stable. And then those people, they came and they have gifts in their hands. And they said to you, where the gifts are coming from? Do they give a gift to the born Messiah? They gave gifts. So those people are really mentally ill. And you will notice that those who join the attack on Christmas, they join it with the atheist, with the Muhammadan. Even there is a guy, he posted a link. I don't know. I, should, I wish to have it so we can we can show you how silly. There's a Hindu priest. He have a red dot makeup in his face. He look weird. And he said, uh, I don't know, okay, but he was saying Christmas uh, 25 December. I say to this Hindu priest, if you can't find me the birth date of the thousands of rats you worship in the temple, let me know. This is what you are worried about. The 25th of December is not the birth of Jesus, but you worship rats. Hey, by the way, the rats rat you worship as God. In which month he was born? Even the one who worship rats, he have his input now in Christmas Day. Rats, I mean, come on. I mean, make it a chicken. Make it a bird. Uh, make it a monkey. Rat. And you are complaining about the date of a Christmas, screaming at the Christians, saying to them bad language. Don't let me go there. You will be sorry. It's not a good thing to be a rat anywhere in the world unless you are there. Where? There. Where? Where? There. Lucky rats. They are gods. And this Hindu priest is worrying about 25th of December. So if you, if you are going to download the video, uh, actually, there's there's a link of him down in the in the comment. Somebody made a comment in the previous uh, video, speaking about his Hindu attacking Christianity, and speaking about 25th of December. So just cut that part and let everybody laugh. So they are worried about the 25th of December, but they are not worried about worshiping rats as God. Get busy with your stupidity. I can convince millions of people that 25th of December is fine, but I cannot convince one person that rat is a god. I mean, I like Mickey Mouse, to be honest with you. But he is not God. And the funny is that Hindus, they worship rats. Muslims, they want to kill them because they are shaitan. To the point even the Muslim, they have fatwa against Mickey Mouse himself, and Mickey Mouse now is hiding. Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe. This is the video of the sheikhs of Saudi Arabia making fatwa that Mickey Mouse must die. You must kill Mickey Mouse. Why? For he is the devil, he is shaitan. So two stupid religion, both of them they attack at Christmas, one worship rats and one they believe rats is shaitan. What's wrong with you people? And the funny here, they say to you, Saudi religious leader proclaimed fatwa against Mickey Mouse. The fact, this is the fatwa of Muhammad. This is what Muhammad said. Even he called the rat, he called him al fuisiqa Which means like the, the one he is, uh, uh, like uh, the one who, uh, 
uh, you know, if, if you are perverted or some, you know, I mean, something wrong with your ethic. <laughs> I mean, it's a rat, you idiot. Rat, they do what rats do. <laughs> What's wrong with those people? We as a Christians, we are very happy for having Christmas. If you are a person who claim to be Christian, you don't like Christmas, I advise you to go and hide under the bed because Santa Claus is coming to town. I feel sorry for you. It's a very hard time. And those Christians who celebrate Christmas, they will go to hell, brother, because it's not in the Bible. You know, it's a stupid idiot people. Even I heard somebody, he's supposed to be a minister in a church, he said, these days, they made Santa Claus as God. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, why? Because they tell that Santa Claus is watching you if you misbehave. Like, what the heck? This is what the Christian teach, that Santa Claus is God now? Are you talking to kids? This is the preacher he speak in a church? I want to know who is the idiot who hired you. You know, at some time you ask yourself, I think a rat can do better speech than those people. We are happy to have a Christmas. And now let us show you, and this is the second part of the video. So those who want to download the video, cut it two pieces, name the first one, Christmas is biblical from the Bible. And now the second part. Let us show you the power of Christmas. Christmas is coming to town. Where in Saudi Arabia? Where in Emirat? Where in Qatar? Where in Bahrain? The first news is that after 2000 years, the Saudi people, they are celebrating Christmas. And this is by the permission by the crown prince. So we say to him, thank you, crown prince of Saudi Arabia, for bringing Christ and Christmas to the life of the Saudi so they can have the joy. Now, Christmas in Saudi Arabia will make a lot of Abdul unhappy. This is a huge Christmas tree in the biggest mall of the capital of Emirat. Or what about the one in Riyadh? Or what about even in the tents, even Santa Claus is coming in the top of a camel there. And here is my challenge to those Abduls in YouTube who hate Christ. I will make a specific challenge. We have this potato. You see this potato? Huh. This potato. Muta boy. The coward who don't dare to let me call him or to speak to me. Potato. The dark history of a Christmas. Hey, potato, son of Muta. I challenge you to make a video condemning the action of the king of Bahrain and the king of Saudi Arabia to allow Christmas in Saudi Arabia. Do you dare? Guess what? You will act as you heard nothing. He will go now and he will put his head under his tail. And I will say, he will say, I did not hear Christian Prince making a challenge. I challenge you, potato. If you are not, a, if you are a man, really prove it. You see, you don't dare to debate me. You don't dare to let me call you. You are hiding like a potato. I understand. But it's time for you to stand up. Isn't it the dark history of a Christmas? Make a video condemning the order of the Saudi and Bahrain the two royal family for allowing Christmas in Saudi Arabia and in Bahrain, but he will never dare is a potato son of Muta. He do Muta for living. He act as if he is a man, but a man he will act like a rat in the front of a lion. Not long time ago, Christians used to be arrested for celebrating Christmas secretly in Saudi Arabia. Not long time ago. Now, because we have this wonderful crown prince, and we are really very thankful for having this man, 
He is bringing Saudi Arabia out of the darkness, out of the dark ages. I mean, look at this, all those pictures from Saudi Arabia. Look at this. Man, that's good. That's wonderful. And then, not only Muslims in Saudi Arabia, they celebrate Christmas. Muslims all over the world, including Europe, celebrate Christmas. Last year, Muhammad Salah, the football player, he celebrated Christmas with his children and his wife. And the Muslim, they weren't so upset. Muhammad Salah, he just posted recently a new picture of him with his children and his wife celebrating Christmas. Do you see the power of Christmas, my friend? Christmas is a great way to bring people to know Christ. Those liars, when they say Christmas is dark, Christmas is evil, most of them, they experience the Christmas themselves and they see how wonderful it is. So all those videos made by the foolish Muhammad and saying Christmas is dark, Christmas is evil, Christmas is bad, proven to be, this is a false because here we go. Those are first witnesses from the Muslims who celebrate Christmas. Do you see them living in darkness? Do you see them living in happiness or darkness? Why you lie to your people? You're afraid, aren't you? Christmas is coming to town. Who can stop it? For this is a Christ, my friend. All right? Yeah, actually, the crown prince, he have a, he have a very expensive printing of Jesus, correct? He bought it for, for I don't know how, how much, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. Actually, I'm really happy for this crown prince to be in Saudi Arabia. This guy, he changed in a few years what nobody was able to change for centuries. And I cannot wait until this guy became the king. Because obviously, Saudi Arabia already... It is not the same. He allow women to drive for the first time. Women, they can travel for the first time. Women, they can own their cars and drive without permission from their parents for the first time. Uh, so, uh, the, the Sharia police is banned from any action. They are, they are not exist no more. They cannot stop anybody. All of this is because of this man. So, Sometimes we say, like the first step for the 1,000 step, right? This guy already, he passed half of the 500 steps. Saudi Arabia is not what they used to have anymore. In the same time, you will see those dummies don't dare to speak against the king of Saudi Arabia. Why? Because they're potatoes. I want to see from those the uh, YouTubers, YouTubers, hmm. Uh, hey Mimi Hijab, I want you to make a video against the king of Saudi Arabia. I mean, you know what? I give you an idea, just an idea. You can take off your t-shirt and show him your nipples so he will be in fear and he will stop celebrating Christmas. And I think you should make a special video for Muhammad Salah too. You and uh, Uthman, Sheikh Uthman. Both of you, you take off your t-shirt and you show your nipples. And I think that will scare everybody, including the Christians. They will not celebrate Christmas no more. I heard that China now is running away to the different galaxies since Mimi Hijab, he took off his t-shirt and show his nipples. And I heard, I don't know if this is true or not, by the way, this is Sahih Bukhari. I heard that in Sahih Bukhari, it says that Ch Chinese now, they are preparing for war with nipples. Do you know the movie, this guy, what his name? I don't know. He he go, uh, the, power of the, the power of who? Forgot the name, it's a comedian. And there is, there's two women, they are wearing a bra, and then there's fire come from their nipples. That is Mimi Hijab. Before and after. Cry. Cry and say goodbye. Islam is dying. 
Islam is dying. You like it or not? Nipple warrior. I want to do jihad by showing my nipples. Like Abdul. If you want to do jihad, join the Al -Qaeda, ISIS, Al Qaeda. Since when people they do jihad by showing their nipple? That's it. And now I became so famous, even the Muslims are using me for commercial break. What the heck? You are using your nipples? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Austin Power. So Mimi Hijab, he wanted to practice Austin Power, you know. So he took off his t-shirt. Unbelievable. So my friends, Christmas is wonderful. And by the way, I don't want to forget to remind you, that we have our biblical or Bible study channel now and we will be there often more than you know uh, we started already a few days ago so if you like to join us the admin will post for you a link for our Bible channel so you can join us if you are interested this is only for the Bible just to study the Bible nothing more nothing less and uh, I know that you, we will get a lot of weirdo and even people who claim to be Christians but they are Muslims making some stupid comment. But I mean, this is the earth of stupidity, what you can say, right? Uh, and you know, I am really happy if you go right now and I know that we, we ourselves, we say Christmas is not Santa Claus, Christmas is not a tree. But my friend, those are not a bad habit or a bad tradition. Because those what? People, they uh, be happy, happy in the name of Christ, number one. Number two, they say to you that people, they do shopping, spend money. Nothing, nothing wrong with spending money. You support the local economy and the world economy by spending. As long as you have the money, don't spend and be a fool if you don't have it. We create jobs because we spend, not because we save. But just save. for security, but don't spend like a fool. So in Christmas, is it wrong to buy a gift for your neighbor who is a child, maybe is an orphan? Is that bad? Is that a bad tradition? Let us say it's tradition. Is that a bad tradition? Is it sad to make your children happy? Is it ugly? Why they are attacking Christmas? Because they don't have any joy in their life. Sad people. You know, this is what happened uh, in the Middle East. We say like uh, there's a there's a whore. There's a whore. And what the whore do? She speak about all women in the neighborhood, making up stories about them. They are whore too. Why? Because she don't want to be the only whore in town. And this is what those people do. Those Abdul who they are attacking Christmas, they present for me a whore who they have no honor. They have no profit. This is why they look for their profit in our book. They cannot find their profit in, our, in their book. They cannot find their profit in their book. So we look for him where? In our book because it's a whore. When the whore have no honor, she look for honor in different place. It's a whore, whore mentality. And look at the Photoshop. Look how, how bloody Santa Claus become. He looked like Muhammad, my friend. Is that Khalid bin Walid, the one who killed the Muslim and cooked him and eat him? Is that Ali who burned people alive? Is that Muhammad who raped a child? Because from the picture you are showing me, and you know what? Just because of you, I'm going to use this picture for Muhammad from now on. Deal with it. And what you can do about it. Here we go. We took selfie for your profit. Because this is what the Muslims exactly try to do. They try to make their profit as a nice like Santa Claus when he is a child molester, perverted man, killer, thief, even his own son wife, when he went to the house of his own son, he flirted with the wife and then later he did boom boom with her. That is Muhammad. That is not Santa Claus. Now we go to Bahrain. We go where? 
to Bahrain. Man, yesterday I was watching, not yesterday, the day before actually, I was watching the Christmas celebration in Bahrain. Unbelievable. Brother, look at this first church ever built in Bahrain. Huge, huge. You know what a huge mean? Huge. And not only that, they call the church the Lady of Arabia. Our Lady of Arabia. So the Muslim acknowledge that Mary, she is the Lady of Arabia. Isn't it that amazing? Christmas has come into town. What you can do about it? If you are Abdul from Bahrain, I would like to see you making a video condemning the behavior of the king of Bahrain. I know, now they will say, it's okay, we like to open bridges. Oh, huh? Siri, yes, you are very, um, very bridges, huh? a lot of bridges. Hmm. You know? Bridges, huh? Our Lady of Arabia, the Lady of Arabia. And if you look inside this church, I could not believe how huge it is. And more is coming to town. So I say to you, Christians, those who don't want to celebrate Christ for Christmas is about Christ. It's not about Santa Claus. It's not about toys and gifts. It's called the Christmas, which means Christ Mass, Christ Prayer. If you are not a person who is so excited that Christ, he came to this earth, we don't care for the date. The date is not important. Christmas is every day. I said before, if I was a king, let us say if I was a king of Saudi Arabia, I will make Christmas 365 days a year. Isn't it that beautiful? We'll change our life. We'll be like paradise. If I was the king and I am dictator, and we are Arab, we fit for that perfectly. You know, dictator, man, we can do the best. I mean, nobody can beat that. I, I challenge you. I challenge you in that. You know, we don't believe in democracy. Yeah. You vote against me, we kill you. Very easy. So I will make order the first day, 365 days of Christmas. You know, the... Uh, the president of Korea, North Korea, he ordered the Korean not to smile for 11 days. I will do the opposite. I will order all the Arabian to have fun and be happy with Jesus for 365 days. And Santa Claus is coming to town. And we are coming to town. The internet is conquering. The African are better dictators? Give me a break, man. <laughs> I challenge you. Bring your dictator, I bring you my dictator, let us see who is better. Let me remind you, my friend. Saddam Hussein is my cousin. The other cousin is al Qazafi. The other cousin, I'm not going to count for you. Come on, you know the rest. Like, hello. Unbelievable. Look, they are, the African now competing with us. Huh. Yeah, right. Your dream, my friend. Nobody can win that competition. Even Stalin, he cannot win with us. You know? So, I like my people, by the way. By the way, we are Arab. We are the best people came to the, to the, to the world, you know? This is what the Quran says. Khayru ummatin ukhraj linnas. Muhammad, he think. I, I don't know about Muhammad. You know, Muhammad is a guy. He think the Abdul are the best nation came to earth. And the Muslim, they say to you, the Jews are racist. They believe that they are the best of the world. 
uh, Abdul, you have the same verse in the Quran about you. That's why the Muhammad and they think they are superior. And then you look at them, they don't even know how to do poo poo. When they go and jump in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the water, have dead dogs and women blood from period like Muhammad did. If you go to the Quran, chapter 3, verse 110, it says, You are the best people. That's why you see them, they are so proud. About what? I have no idea. You will see Abdul is so proud about they are the best people. And yet, yet, if he is if he see his sister wearing short, he get horny. They are the best people. Incest is the biggest problem in the Middle East. A woman walking alone in the street, she is under the risk of being kidnapped or raped, guaranteed. You are the best people. Number one search engine in the world in Google for sex with camel or donkey or even rape a child is Pakistan. You are the best people. For sure you are. Who can beat that? Right? However, you will see the stupid God. He just said to the Muslims, you are the best people, you know. But then if you try to find out, is it really about Muslims? Is it the stupid Quran says that the best people are the Jews? What's wrong with this book? According to the Quran, there is many verses. All of them is about the Jews. And all of them saying that they are the best of mankind. And not only that, not only mankind, even genie. Like what the heck? They are the best of mankind and genie? Yes, brother. Now for sure, depending on the translation, you will see the differences. Like here it says, to all, I prefer you to all other. This is false translation. Change the donkey. Because those are donkey translators. They are not translators. I never saw a one Muslim translate correctly. They do it on purpose, by the way. They fabricate translation. Look, we change the translator. Look at this. The the how in the world you say such a thing? Oh, children of Israel, remember my favor which I bestowed upon you, and I preferred you. Oh, to Alamin. Okay, what Alamin between two bracket? Mankind a jinn. How you prefer the Jews from the Jinn too? They were genie too? Ah, there's a genie Jew. Jack Shalom, genie. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, Jack Shalom, are you there? Khabib Christian Prince, I'm a genie, and I'm going to show you how a genie can do. Hey, Jack Shalom, what you can do? I'm going to tell you why you don't buy a credit card. Ah, uh, this is what genie do. Yes, and you can put your money in our bank, Khabibi. Okay, if you put your money in our bank, Habibi, we can give you good ingress, Habibi. Are you a genie or a banker now, Habibi? You can take the idea of Habibi. Allah, he favor us upon the mankind because we are a genie, Habibi. Like, what the heck? And then they say to you that the Jews are racist. They claim that they are the best of mankind when there's stupid Quran, have tons of verses, keep saying they are the best of a human being and genie. Genie in the ball. Aladdin, yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to keep you longer. Don't forget to download the video. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. And uh, again, I hope people will download the video, cut it to pieces, make it like a cake, you know, cake for you, cake for me. One about Christmas in the Bible in the beginning, and then the second part, challenging the Abdul, to face the tsunami of a Christmas coming into town. Emirat, Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, you name it. Everywhere. Everywhere. You are cornered. Even if you live inside a circle, we will corner you with the truth. And the truth will come free. I hear that in Indonesia wishing Christmas is forbidden. Who care? I mean, those people, they are trying to stop it, right? 
but it's coming to town. You see, they are talking too much about it because it is coming to town, my friend. Not because the opposite. <laughs> you know what I mean? They are speaking too much about it because Christmas is coming to town and they are trying their best to stop it, but they cannot. Christ is coming to town. Go and see those immigrants who they are coming even to Europe. They are leaving Islam by thousands. As soon as they see how stupid Islam is and they, what they taught, you see, the immigrant, he come to Europe, they give him food, they give them shelter, they give them school. In Islamic countries, they slave them. Literally, they slave them. They rape the women, they slave the men. Those are the Christians who celebrated Christmas and you are saying they are dark and evil. Dark Christmas. The dark history of Christmas. The Muslims in Indonesia and in Malaysia, they are throwing the refugee from Muslim refugee from many more in the ocean. They throw them in the ocean, literally. Mimi Hijab, he took off his T-shirt, showing his, his nipple, and the King of Saudi signed agreement of billions of dollars with with, with the with the uh, Chinese government, Emirates, Bahrain, all of them. And this is why I stand with the Chinese government, by the way, not because it's a good government, but I believe the Chinese are fighting terrorists. Last time I was in China, I mean I posted the video before, if you remember, about me in China, you know, in, in the street of China. Maybe I should post more. Uh, there is a, if anyone went to the Forbidden City, it's called the Forbidden City, you will see a long line of condoms. Those are, they were new. So I said, why, what, what, I mean, they are annoying. Why they put them here? They said, because it happened before, many times, Muslim terrorist, he go with his truck over the crowd, tourist, to kill as many as he can. And they say to you that they are discriminating the Igor. The Igor have the biggest brigade of terrorism in Syria. They are the most aggressive terrorists. They call it the Suicide Bomber Brigade. This is the truth. And I, we know, and you know, that the American, the Canadian, the European, they are using the Muslims as an excuse to stop the growth of China. It's not because they knew, because all of them, they are doing the same. All of them, they are doing the same. America was bombing who for the last 20 years? Putting sanctions in who for the last 20 years? They have a sanctions in a country that's called Iran, have 80 million people. So if the Chinese making a sanctions, let us say 80 million, if you claim, if this is true, which is not true because they are inside their country. You are making a sanctions over a country, even Syria, they can't even buy drugs. They can't buy drugs for their kids. So who is the one killing Muslim, the Chinese? Or those who put sanctions, including Muslim countries, who put sanctions on Muslims? Who is the, bomb, who is the one who is bombing Muslims in Yemen? And why the Muslims in Yemen, they are bombing people in Saudi Arabia? Because this is what Muslims do. But we knew that the lie about China is just to stop China from growing. The same they do with everybody. So China is not the same as before. China became so giant, so big, so huge is power, economy, military. And now they woke up too late. Suddenly, TikTok is a, is a danger. TikTok is danger. Why? Because they are taking a lot of uh, information from people. Will you have information of everybody in the world? Don't you own Google? How come you can have information of everybody, but nobody can have information like you? Who is the one who owns Google, Facebook? I mean, all of this garbage. All what they are trying to do is just to stop China from growing so the excuse of a chinese uh, uh, discriminating muslims 
it's an excuse because Chinese they are discriminating everybody any religion Muslim Christians go and see how many church they destroy the same day I arrived to China I remember a huge church was destroyed in China but you don't see the Western speaking about it because supposedly they want to look they don't want to look like they are defending Christianity but they are defending the poor Muslims Thousands of churches destroyed in China. We never heard a Trump talking about it. Did you? We never heard Biden talking about it. Suddenly Trump is so protective to the Muslims in China. And he told them, we need to buy TikTok from you. <laughs> I mean, who is that? <laughs> Do you see it? This is in China. They destroy churches, and not only that, they replace the cross, they burn the cross in the front of the Christians. And they replace the cross with the sign of the communist. So how come everybody is upset for what they do to the Muslims supposedly but we don't see the Chinese destroying mosques. But my friend, the good news is, China is the coming Christian giant country. Millions and millions convert into Christianity in China. So China is the biggest Christian country in the world soon. Soon. And actually I spoke to one of those Christians in one of those churches he said by destroying our churches they actually made us more uh, uh, successful I said how he said because we used to like this church can take 20,000 people now you destroy the church what they would do they are going to divide themselves into smaller groups and spread all over and that will bring more Christians will make more people convert so the Chinese communist regime, they understand that the biggest threat, threat, but we are not terrorists, threat to their ideology is not the Muslims. Nobody is convinced with Muslims who believe that a rat, he became a Jew, or a Jew became a rat. Or a Jew who became a, 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 a I mean, those, they don't really believe in Islam. I went to China and I saw Muslims, I saw what their girls wearing. They have nothing to do with Islam. China is the biggest giant coming Christian country. And I hope soon I will be able to go and do life from China. Last time actually I went there, I wanted to do life, but I was surprised that Google does not work there. You can't even open your Gmail there. This is why China is a secret police state, communist. But who can believe that in a communist state, Christianity can grow so fast? That is so beautiful. And actually, I want to tell you something. That the Christians who they are discriminated, they make better Christian from those who they are not. You see those people who they are against Christmas? None of them is from a country who they are discriminated. Those are the spoiled Christians. They want to find excuse. You know what I mean? The spoiled one. The Christians who are under discrimination, they love Christmas because nobody understands the joy of Christ as they do. They die for it, literally. So my friend, Christmas is coming to town. You like it, you don't. It is coming to town. And it is. Again, the admin will post for you the link for my other channel if you like to join us. And we are going to have a special you know, celebration for the new year. And remember, the new year is not about party. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't be stupid. New year is about remembering what you did for the last year and to do like, let us say, 
you you face yourself with your good and bad and you promise yourself to go forward for something better new year is to remember the lord is not a party christianity have nothing to do with party christianity is not about drinking and never was about drinking those who drink those who go and do fornication in the new year evening those have nothing to do with the christian belief those are the atheists actually and this is here and the muslims too and this is here the irony the new year is for us and they want to hijack it from us and make it something else so let us keep it clean as the lord he told us he said be holy like your father be holy like your father i wish i can say the same to muslims be holy like muhammad because that will be a very awkward invitation. Be holy like your father and celebrate the day of the father every day, not only in Christmas day, for every day is a Christmas. For every day is the day of the Lord. And those who don't like it, cry and live with your sadness. The Lord, he wanted us to be happy. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. And you say to me, there's no Christmas. This is the day of love where God, he decided to send his only begotten son. Christmas is about love, my friend. Their hatred cannot fight the love of Christ. The Bible says, love never fail. They do. As long the day is the day of love, decent love, not perverted one, love never fail. And I'm so glad that Uthman, he made a picture of his prophet so I can use it always when I talk about Muhammad. And Muslim, don't blame me. It's not me who made it. You are trying to make fun of our belief? Ah, okay, I will use the same picture over and over and over for Muhammad. Actually, I'm going to save it in my picture drive so I will never lose it because now I have it just in the desktop. Anytime we speak about Muhammad, when I talk about how Muhammad say, I will use the graphic made by Sheikh Uthman. Thank you, Sheikh Uthman. Actually, your prophet, I think he look worse. You look at the moon. You look at the prophet. You look at the moon. You look at the prophet. You look at the moon. You look at the prophet. You look at the moon. You look at the prophet. Black stone kissers talking about paganism. Black stone worshippers who believe that the black stone erased their sin. They are talking about paganism. Go, my friend, go. Go and walk around the stone in the shape of a vagina and put your head there. And don't forget to take a selfie. You will look like the vagina elf. And there is a Saudi police next to the black stone. Do you know why? Because those Muslims, they block out the little rocks. The stone is not even there. I mean, you see, this is one of the proofs that Muhammad is a fraud. He told them that the black stone is going to witness for them in the judgment there, right? But maybe you do not know. There's nothing left of the black stone. There's little tiny rocks. And this is what the Muslims are looking. The rest is walks. They are walks in it. The stone of God is under maintenance. Every week. Because there's nothing left of it. And they say to you, the black stone. Where is the black stone? There's nothing left. Look, look. This is the Muslim website. And they are showing you what exactly is inside the black stone. There's no black stone no more. Look at this. Look at this madness. No. Those are the rocks. The rest is wax. So they're trying to resemble the old vagina. And what they claim that those are the few rocks left from the black stone. And this is a proof that Muhammad is a fraud because if this stone is going to stay into the day of judgment, what kind of a stone need a maintenance every week adding rocks and a guard next to the stone so nobody will unblock the rocks, those little rocks. By the way, Ardugan, he was proud. We have one of that. He stole it. It's in Turkey. They steal it. They go there. 
You take with you like a like a like a, the one you cut your nail with it, you know, and you make yourself like uh, kissing it, and then you unblock the, the rock and you put it in your mouth. This is the stone who erased your sin. Your God could not preserve it. And to make it more horrible, the Kaaba, which Allah He chose the location of the Kaaba. Look how. Mean. Okay. Hey Muslims, who is the one who chose the location of the Kaaba? Allah. Mm -hmm. Are you sure, Abdul? Allah, absolutely. Hey Abdul, so why the Kaaba is located in the worst place in the world where all the poopoo -poo come to it when there's little rain? What is this? The poopoo -poo of Mecca is coming because you know, in Mecca. You know, this is what Saudi Arabia, uh, until now, most of Saudi Arabia don't have a sewage, actually. They have a, they call it Bayara, you know, which is a, a hole, you know, next to your house. All the poopoo -poo you have goes to it. And because the, the nature of the ground is sandy, usually uh, it sucks a lot of it, but, it, you know, it, it can come and became flooded out. So when a lot of rain happened, what would that will have to do? We'll take all the poop in the town, down to the lowest point of town, it is the Kaaba. Brother, do you want to take a swim in the poop? Look at this guy, is swimming. How in the world this God is the one who chose the location of the Kaaba? And then he chose it in the worst location where it's going to be flooded by poop. And then the Muslims in Saudi Arabia, with the money of the oil, they ask the American for help, how we can stop the flooding. So the American engineering, not Allah, was able to take and direct, redirect the flood. Otherwise, Saudi Arabia Kaaba used to be flooded for a hachu. Like the nature say hachu, the Kaaba is full of poo-poo. And then they say to you, Allah is the one who chose the location, brother. Imagine you have an engineer, he chose a house location for you, where always the poopoo of all the town come to town to you. How this is, can be the house of God? Buddy? Eh? Well, if the God is Allah, I believe it's the perfect place. I want to say thank you. And look here, this picture. This guy, he was the one who was swimming. Look, look. They are showing you this picture here. This guy is the one who was swimming around the Kaaba in the poopoo. Alhamdulillah. And now he's older. So not long time ago, the Kaaba every year is flooded by poo, poo And yet they claim they call it Holy Kaaba. Well, absolutely it's holy. I mean, how stupid does God? Can't he choose a few meters away? And you know, there is a hill next to the, build the Kaaba on the hill. I mean, just left it. Okay, you know what, Muslims? If Allah is God, he can say B is going to be. What about Allah now? He say B. And the Kaaba will, the ground will lift up the Kaaba, will be saved from the flood of the Pupu. Oh, I forgot. Allah, he said, be, but you don't mean it. Thank you very much for being here. And again, my friend, if you are a Christmas believer, Christ believer, celebrate Christmas and don't let that fool fool you. When you celebrate Christmas, you are not celebrating tree. We don't worship trees. We don't worship Santa Claus. We worship only one Lord. His name is the Messiah. He is our Savior. Those people, they have their hatred to Jesus. And they use any excuse to fight Jesus. But we are victorious with him. And God is good. Merry Christmas, everybody. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, 
and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. In the prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him, 